This week we're going to have to put our tree compositions on hold, our warm and cool colors. And when we come back together again, we will finish putting all of the pointillism cool colored leaves on the fronts of our trees. But for this week, we're going to practice some of our color blending and coloring in layers. So remember how I talked about getting a smooth saturation, being able to color in one direction going one way and then building in the direction, going in a different direction, building up the next layer. We're going to work on that, but we're also going to put two colors together and see how we can make them blend and become one in the middle. All right. So you have this worksheet that I'm sending home with you. I want your name and your grade, of course, name and grade, name and grade, name and grade. Otherwise, I get to keep the homework and no one else gets to see it. And that's not as much fun. So make sure you have your name and your grade on it and your date. And what you're going to do is you're going to pick two colors, one set for this cup and one set for this cup. I'd like you to pick a light and a dark, which these are the colors that I chose. I'm going to do pink and green. And we're going to start by practicing fading our colors in these rectangles right up here. So taking my light color first, I'm going to start on one side of my rectangle and I'm keeping my pencil flat. I'm not holding my pencil like this. So if you see your pencil coming out at the top of your hand, that's not going to hold it flat. Okay. We're going to keep it flat to the page. You can see my hand is over top of my pencil. And when I first start, when I'm on one side, of my rectangle, my pressure is going to be a whole lot harder. And I'm going to lighten as I go across my rectangle and come to the other side. I can come over these edges a little bit to make sure that I don't have any of those white lines sticking out. That's called haloing. We don't want any haloing in our color. So you can go up against those edges and then come with your heavier pressure and build out. When you're looking at your rectangle, you want to think about it being like you're spreading that light color two thirds of the way across. Now you're going to come in with your dark color and you're going to spread that dark color two thirds of the way across going the opposite direction. Try changing your paper, putting it upside down and every other direction that you need to help you get that angle that you need. Again, I'm going out two thirds of the way across. I'm going to stop. I'm going to come and get these corners, these edges, so I don't have any white. And this edge up here. All right. Now I have my basic blending of the two colors coming together. Now, this is where I say try to change that angle up and build another layer. So we're going to go back to our light color. And instead of going up and down, I'm going to come at an angle. Again, as we go across, we want to lighten the pressure. And we're still going to go about two thirds of the way across. Okay, I'm going to do it again going on this angle. And about two thirds of the way across. And as I'm going across, I'm not pushing down as hard so that I can let that color fade out. All right, so now we have our pinks fading from a light pink to a dark pink. Let's go back and let's do that with our greens. So now we have our green fading from our light to our dark. Now we're going to pull that down into our teacups. And if you look at our teacups and our coffee cup, you have a light side and then the side that's already shadowed. So the side that's already shadowed, that's going to be the side you use your dark on. And the light side, that's going to be the side you use your light on. And we're going to practice doing that blending, letting those colors overlap in the middle. So I'm going to start using my light. 
And on the inside of my cup, this is shadowed over here, but back here, it's light. So I'm going to take that, and I'm not going to go all the way across, but I'm going to go almost all the way across. Now I'm going to put my light down on this part of the cup. Being careful when I get to my edges so that I don't go over. And I'm lightening my pressure as I go across. And I can come back in and I can clean up some of those, that haloing, any of that white that's left behind. I'm going to go ahead and change my direction on that even. That will help get rid of some of those color lines that you see. Come from this direction as well. And then I have some of that light on my handle that I'm going to pick up. And I can see it starts to fade down here and see the shadow there. So I'm going to make sure I get that light green on the top of the bottom down there. There we go. Now it's time for me to switch over to my dark pencil. Starting on the inside of the cup. I'm not going to miss that portion up at the top where it fades the opposite direction. And that's a little bit of a tighter squeeze. So if you need to get your pencil a little bit more upright, you can do that. And then now coming down the back of the cup. Starting out with my harder pressure, and I'm going to lighten my pressure as I go across. So that my colors blend right in the middle. Now I'm going to come back over with another layer going a different direction. Again, so it just helps blend and smooth out any of those color lines. And do it again coming from the other direction. All right, now I need to get my handle, the bottom of the handle. And again, it's getting a little bit tighter quarters down there. So if you need to put your pencil upright a little bit more, but still be very careful to not leave those color stroke lines, but to keep your pencil flat to the page. So that it's nice and smooth. All right, so now we have our green cup and our rectangle done. Now we're going to go over to our pink. So again, starting with our light color, we're going to lay the light color down. And I'm looking to see where they've put the shadows. And that will help me know where I need to have my light pink and where I'm going to put my dark pink. So getting the basic outline of this, and then now I can just let that color fade across. And it's not directly up and down on this teacup. That color fades across a little bit of an angle. So see if you can get that angle. And then we're going to come back in a little bit of a different direction. And again, just let that color fade across, changing your pressure as you go. And then I have this handle that has lots of light pink on it. So I'm going to come in, get that picked up. And just the top of this bottom portion, portion of the handle has the light pink. All right, so now I'm going to grab my dark pink and I'm going to work my way from the other direction, merging into my light pink. I'm going to start by just kind of outlining that shape. <clears throat> it's a little bit more complex of a shape than what the 
rectangle and the my green cup were. So getting a little bit of an outline is kind of nice to have so you can build on that. And right under this rim it has a little bit of a different shadow where that dark goes across a little bit further. So I'm going to pick that up as well. All right and now we're going to just start our value change starting out with a little bit more pressure and lightening my pressure as I go across the cup all right we're going to switch up our angles just to see if we can get those lines smoothed out a little bit more and I'm kind of curving my coloring on this one just because, like I said, that cup is a little bit of a different shape than our green cup was. And then I need to grab the bottom of that handle and get that dark color in there. All right, so there you have it. This is what I want you to work on this week. Working those two colors together, trying to create those layers so that there is a soft um, but full saturation on your coloring without seeing any of the toothy lines in between where you see the white of your page. I cannot wait to see your finished work and I will see you in a couple of weeks. Bye kids.